So I'm not sure I'm going to cover all the things about secondary market. I'm going to try and give you a very focused discussion on a foundational element of what makes a secondary market work and what really makes an initial issuance market work. Um, admittedly, all the things I'm going to say are probably much more focused on supporting individual investors versus institutional investors and are a, a tad skewed more towards equity than debt, uh, at least sticking with securities as opposed to, to non-security uh, kind of debt. So. First off, I'm happy there's still a few of you here. It's been a long day. You've heard a lot of presentations. Hopefully a few more people trickle in and, and then I don't have to repeat myself one-on-one -on -one later, but I'll be happy to take any questions uh, later in the conference or as Luan said, during the cocktail time. So the first question about secondary markets, and uh, I'll use this little thing, is does the secondary market matter for these private securities? And I've heard mixed viewpoints on this. Uh, some folks have said things like, it is absolutely critical to have a secondary market to be able to get money out of a security or no one will bother to invest it in the first place. I've also heard other people, and this is more in the hedge fund end of the spectrum, say my clients are rich, they trust me, and they don't need the money. Um, but I think we've seen a lot of examples where that works out really badly for people. Um, so I, I'd rather go for the transparency and liquidity part. Um, me personally, if it doesn't have some liquidity, I'm probably not interested in it. So take that a little bit bigger picture, and I would argue that a key part of the success for public companies raising money is that there in fact is a liquid and transparent secondary market. And there's no reason that I can think of to, that that same lesson learned wouldn't apply for the private securities markets. So I'm gonna make the argument that us, all of us, because there are many a platform folks here, working together to provide secondary market liquidity for private securities, it's critical to the growth of the asset class, and more importantly, to filling this capital chasm for small companies in the US between banks and VCs, where there's not a lot of money right now. So next, if, if you'll accept that there, in fact, is a need for a secondary market, you might say, but is there anything wrong with the current secondary transaction process? And I'm not sure how many of you have participated in that, but I have, and it's messy. Um, really messy. The time, the cost, the risks associated with transacting in certificated and other non-DTC sort of listed securities is so high that there almost is no such activity. Um, broker costs, legal opinion costs, bank escrow costs, well in excess of 10% of the amount of money being raised or in a secondary transaction, the amount of money uh, changing hands on top and particularly in the secondary space of trying to find a buyer who might give you a fire sale price makes the people who have already bought a security feel trapped, and the people who are thinking about investing in one of these equities, typically equity, say thanks but no thanks. So prospective buyers don't really like escrows. I mean, it's the process that's existed for 50 plus years, but nobody said it was a good process. Um, they generally have real concerns about the validity of the security being sold, and even if you believe that the security being sold is valid, you have no reason to believe that the person selling it has a right to sell it. Um, this is on top of and related to the fact that issuers aren't really typically involved in that process until the very end, after a buyer and a seller have already sort of found each other and agreed on price. At that point, the issuer often slows things down, steps in, takes over with a right of first refusal, or simply stops the secondary transactions altogether. They, don't, they might not want a secondary transaction. They might not want somebody else to own their security, and they definitely might not want price to have been set without their participation in that process. So, that sounds bad, but I think that's just the start of current problems in the secondary private securities market. Uh, all of this stuff that's happening right now is happening outside the bounds of the established securities industry infrastructure. There are no brokerages, there are no clearing brokers, there are no third party custodians, and all of this results in this morass of transparency and security issues that fortunately have already been solved for in the public security space. We know how to do this. We've been doing it for a long time. I won't say for 100 years, but for 20 or 30 years, this has been pretty well figured out. So a very specific story to give this a little bit of life is a danger of certificated or sort of non-DTC security uh, custody is that when my company was raising money, we got a nice big fat investor who came in and said, we're going to give you a lot of money. And we said, that's great. And he flew my founder out to his ranch and showed off how wealthy he was. And fortunately, before we took that investment, we found out it was completely fraud. 
Uh, this guy had done the thing that many people had done. He took some very nice color photocopies of some very expensive stock certificates. He brought them to his bank, and he took some gigantic multi-million dollar loans out and started spending. He spent on his ranch. He spent on himself. He spent on the airplane that he used to buy to, to fly us out there. He spent on companies that he invested in. And he was hoping that he could make these investments and make money and pay the bank back before anybody noticed. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't work out so well. And that's, that's not the first time, but that was one very personal example for us. Uh, on a lighter, but really no better note, at this conference last year, right here, I met a guy who's not much older than me, um, whose first job on Wall Street was counting the certificates in a huge warehouse. Anybody here raise their hand done that before? All right, so what I learned in that process is that not only is there a, you know, a whole team of people that count them, they have to do it two at a time because they have to count them every month to make sure they still have custody, but you have to do it two at a time so that nobody steals any of them. Except when it's even more fun and it's the debt securities with a little tear-off coupon things, you have to have three people count them. So it's no wonder that stock trades used to cost hundreds of dollars, and it's no wonder that there's not much of a secondary market in these private securities because it doesn't work so well. So that was problem statement. Let's do a little bit of solution statement. Um, if you all agree that secondary markets matter and that the current transaction process doesn't work, I would say that the solution that presents itself is one that we've already seen quite a bit. The rise of online brokerages, and particularly the rise of online brokerage accounts managed by RAAs, really shows us a path forward for capturing the hearts and minds, but also the money of investors, whether they be self-directed investors or advised investors, and most of the money is in the advised side. Um, if we adopt those models, either directly or, or variants of them, that will bring us very quickly into the modern era. So simply put, if we create an online private placement process and a user experience that is on par with, and I'm going to make a new statement, integrated with public securities so that you can have a diversified portfolio of public and private securities all together, that will change the industry. That will make the industry able to grow. That will give the investors an opportunity to participate in all the cool investments that you've heard about so far today. And now I'm going to focus on a very specific little niche within this process, which you probably are going to guess where I'm going. Other than internet access, the key to online brokerages and low transaction costs and both for initial issuance and secondaries has been this evolution away from security certificates and away from lots of individual accounts where you buy some security here and you buy some security there. First, it was to the direct registration system with transfer agents. So if anybody of you remember, it's not that long ago that you could buy some IBM stock from IBM's transfer agent, but you had an account just for IBM. And then you had another account for Apple, and another account for Google, and another account for every other security. Well, obviously, that there was a transition not that long ago to online brokerages with clearing firms underneath of them. So I work for a clearing firm. You can tell I might have a little bit of bias in this, but I'll be upfront about that. And with a clearing firm, you hold securities in what's called book entry, so no pieces of paper. And you do it even more so in what's called street name. So like all the customers, the tens and tens of thousands of investors at my firm, we hold the securities in the name of Folio FN Investments, Inc. for the exclusive benefit of customers. What that means is, from DTCC's view, we just have millions and millions of shares of IBM. From our customer's view, they have IBM in their online brokerage account. Now, what's a little bit different for us, and I, I know others will catch up at some point, is we do that for unlisted and or unregistered securities as well. So if you own some private securities, you own it in your online brokerage account. You get your statements, you get your confirm. If it's got a price, you'll even have a value. You get performance reporting. You get all that stuff that you expect, that everyone's come to expect from an online brokerage that no one really knew they should expect from their private securities. So I'm going to take that together, and I'm just going to repeat myself because it's super important, I think. This change to book entry street name accounting for private securities is one we don't have to wait around for. We don't have to wait for the industry to get big. We can do this today. We can skip all the problems of certificates. We can skip all the problems and work associated with this fun word that I had to look up called the dematerialization of security certificates when you turn them in and it becomes book entry. Uh, you can skip the legal opinions associated with secondary transactions and move right to issuing private securities in book entry, street name, in online brokerage accounts, and with all the support you get from an online brokerage of you know, 26 or 30 different account types. But even more so, and I'm, I'm going to pick on uh, anybody who's here from a particular bank, 
an escrowless, bankless closing process. There's no reason to have to send your money off to some bank and hope that the transaction closes. You have money in your online brokerage account. When this transaction closes, the money comes out, never goes out before that. There's no reason that it should be any different for private securities than public, just no one's ever done it before, until now. Um, so this process enables investors to have a very simple buy in their account, advisors to have a very simple buy in their account, whether it's initial issuance or secondary market transactions. But even more so, it enables issuers to really easily manage their cap table, corporate actions, uh, uh, what am I saying? investor notifications, voting, any additional rounds of fundraising, because all the things that happen in paper certificates of who owns it and how much do they own, they all go away. That's why there are no paper certificates for public securities anymore. They don't issue them. Uh, most places don't even want them. Uh, our firm won't take them. So there's no need also for every front end platform, which there are dozens now and there will be dozens more, to build any of this. This is already built. This is the standard operating procedure for clearing firms. There's a dozen or so of them out there in the country, Folio being one of them, um, that do this book entry street name thing. Now, particular plug for Folio, is that um, I don't know of any others that will do private securities. I don't know of any others that have REST APIs, and I don't know of any others that will do it really cost effectively. So I'm sure others will come to market, though, at some point. A final example, just to add a little more flavor to this, is uh, my firm, just last year, maybe almost two years ago now, spent hundreds and hundreds of hours setting up accounts uh, for dozens of LLCs and their customers invested in pre-IPO uh, Facebook shares. There was no reason to do that. I mean, not really. If people had simply opened up online brokerage accounts to start with and bought that security in their online brokerage account to start with, and it would have cost that brokerage firm that we were supporting and all of their customers far, far less money to end up where they did, which is holding free, freely tradable Facebook shares in a brokerage account that they could either hold or sell. And, you know, people did both. The, um, the other tidbit I'd want to share, for, particularly for those platform folks here, is uh, Folio does make these services available to its investors, but our primary focus here is supporting other platforms to be the DTCC of private securities because no one else has stepped up to do it. Um, I don't think Mark Elenowitz is here today, but uh, a firm here in Manhattan called Troy Point Global Equity is an introducing broker that's really uh, taken this and run with it. They have, they've got a, a platform called Bank, B-A-N-Q.co, where you can both purchase public and private securities in your online brokerage account in book entry, street name, form, and they happen to be using the Folio backend and REST APIs. So in conclusion, I think I'm going pretty fast, we'll keep this on time. Um, a robust online brokerage account process with book entry record keeping for both initial issuance and secondary transactions will meet our industry's needs today and well into the future. And my ask for you is demand this of your suppliers, demand this of your platforms, demand this of yourselves if you are a platform to say, no, I'm not gonna issue paper certificates. No, I'm not gonna make people open accounts at 20 different places. I'm gonna connect to a back-end clearing platform and leverage the learnings that our industry has had for the last 50 years of introducing brokers and clearing brokers make for a great marriage. So thank you very much, appreciate it. We'll see you later. <laughs>